Hey, everyone, welcome back to the podcast. Today, I have my good friend Helen Marshall back for a third debut. I guess it's not a debut if it's the third time, but she's here for the third time. (laughs) Miss Helen Marshall is a certified primal health coach and founder of the grain free food range primal alternative. She was the host of the primal alternative podcast on the wellness couch, which you can still find on iTunes. It is one of the number one ranked health and wellness podcast stations in Australia. Faced with a health crisis, which included chronic nausea, constipation, insomnia, physical pain, headaches, brain fog, and a whole list of other problems, Helen returned to a diet of plants and animals to reclaim her health and started one of the coolest businesses, which is what we're here to talk about today. So welcome, my friend, Helen. Hey, Karen. It's cool to be back. Thank you so much. I feel like a bit of a regular around here and around your people. Hi, everyone. (laughs) Yes, you are regular because we only, I think our last one was back in December, wasn't it? So that's not that long ago. Yeah, we were, we were cramming a few episodes before Christmas so we could just relax <laughs> over the holidays. <laughs> yes, yeah. And so you've moved on from your podcast because your business is getting busy, you're taking it to the next level. And I just wanted to have you on because I love what you do. If I didn't do what I was doing, I would become a primalista. <laughs> <laughs> So tell us all about it. Tell us, tell the listeners, first off, how you came to start this cool business of yours. Sure. Well, you know, pretty much like you just uh, read out in my little intro there, I had, you know, typical, I was a typical victim of the food pyramid um, of the high carbohydrate, gluten, grain, um food paradigm and yeah just felt I was you know late 30s and I just felt like you know I was dying of some hideous disease um I had a million checks to the doctor they found out there was nothing wrong with me apart from perhaps a little bit of IBS but you know there's no drug for that so kind of like off you go maybe you want some antidepressants you're probably just a bit tired because you've got two young kids and here's some anti-nausea tablets for that unbearable sick feeling that you've got all the time so that horrible sick feeling turned out to be a gluten intolerance and the constipation was caused from um, a dairy intolerance so it was really an amazing transformational fix when you took those items out of your um, diet and filled them with you know more leafy stuff more meat Uh, it was a very Oh, a real absolutely life-changing experience and I couldn't believe how much you could change like just everything you know like the the health of my hair the health of my skin my mood my default mood my sleep my bowel movements my my cycle everything just became more optimized is probably the best way to say yeah. it and and I knew because I've worked in the health and fitness industry since the age of 14 So I knew there's lots of women out there that were feeling pretty crappy, were feeling tired, aches and pains, constipated, um, you know, fighting with the blues, that kind of thing. And I just thought, wow, I really want to go and help more people because this is so easy, right? And um, so I qualified as a primal health coach with Mark Sisson's Primal Health Coach Institute. Um, Brilliant course, highly recommend it. And um, went out helping people go grain free. But the feedback that I got was that, you know, it was okay. They definitely felt better. It was really hard to stick to. And it was really hard to feed the family um, when you had to get rid of things like easy things that you can just keep in the freezer, like bread and pizzas. And like, what do you do if you just want a cup of tea and a biscuit or a cookie? Like, what do you do then? So I'd experienced the same problem with my family. And my husband had said to me, we're not going paleo unless we can have some cookies. So I tweaked, like a, I tweaked a, a family favorite chocolate chip cookie recipe, but I like took out the, you know, the the margarine and I put in some organic butter and I took out the self raising flour and I put almond meal in and I changed the like crappy, you know, supermarket forty percent um, chocolate with some dark. 70 percent um chocolate chips and they were so much nicer than the original <laughs> recipe right we're like wow this is amazing 
<laughs> these tastes great. Wow, I don't feel like I'm missing out at all. And so I started to offer these products to my clients and I just found it was so much easier to just to just say here you, you you can't have bread that that bread anymore but you can eat this bread and you you know and it's and so it went on and um people told me that these foods were life-changing like wow. really <laughs> it was like what yeah. they're like this is a difference between you know staying on track or not yeah just use that that's your course thank on you track. Thank it's you. a very good one right it's on good track yeah yeah <laughs> Good positioning, H. Nice one. Um, yeah, so I knew, and you know, as I was going along on my health journey, my health was it it's a steady um upward improvement. Like it doesn't just you don't just get better, you just continue to keep feeling better, right? Um, with the extra tweaks that you make. And I just had this real inspiration one day. I just thought, wow, you know, I've just really I want to get these products to more people, but I don't want to do it in a factory and warehouse situation distributors, big supermarkets, just wasn't my vibe. I thought I want to um, share what I've done, you know, baking from home. Um, it's very, you know, low risk, not potentially hazardous products, a bit like cottage industry style baking. So I could do it from, I was doing it from home, I was there for the family. I felt like I had something that was there for me, but I could also like chuck a lot of washing on and get started on dinner and do some Pilates around it, you know, because um, part of my corporate career was as a recruiter. So I was working with women and helping them find jobs. And oh, it's wow. virtually impossible, Karen, right? To find a job if you've got a family or if you've got a life, right? <laughs> to find a job that has got, you know, 10 weeks annual leave, um, you know, that doesn't involve being at the door at 8am and coming back in at five o'clock wearing ridiculous suits and uncomfortable bras and, you know, just sort of talking like in a bullshit corporate way. Do you know what I mean? I was like sick of that. And so I thought, wow, this is great. You can have your own business. Um, and somebody's already like made all the mistakes and worked out what works and what doesn't and just kind of take it away yourself and kind of plug and play into your life based on what a thriving little home side hustle or business would look like. So that's what I did. And it's, this is the fifth year of rolling out the license, Karen. And I've got to say it's my biggest buzz, biggest contribution ever. And I love it. It's so, so much fun. It just gives me shivers. Really. I just got shivers all over my body, just listening to it because it's, you're so right. And I always think how is it that so many women are doing what they're doing? Families are doing what they're doing, where both parents are working nine to five. They're both away at work. Their kids are being raised by daycare workers. You get home. It's a, no wonder people have a hard time eating healthy, actually, because you come home. I couldn't imagine like getting home at 5, 30, 6 o'clock and then trying to then make dinner for my family being exhausted, having worked all day, barely getting to say hi to your kids and you go to sleep and you do it all over again. And that's the majority of women out there right now. It's not very often that you actually even hear about women staying home anymore because unfortunately, financially, most people find that both parents have to work right now. So I feel blessed for what I do. I know you feel blessed for what you do. And you're giving this opportunity to women that would like to have that choice to stay at home and still make money. So yeah, break absolutely. It, yeah. So I want you to break it down for the audience. What is the system? So what are, you know, you say you, it's kind of a plug and play kind of <laughs> talk. Like if I came to you and I said, I'm ready, I want to become a primalista. What's the process? What does this look like? Okay. Well, that's a great question. And, you know, it's, it's so true. And, and, and it's, there's, you know, there's nothing wrong with work. You know, if that's what you want to do, if you want to work corporate and, yeah. and you, it works better for you to have your kids in daycare and, you, and that's what you thrive on, then that's great. It's but great. I know yeah. for me working in corporate was like, literally it just felt like a slow death uh, of like just bullshitness. Like I said before, it was so inauthentic. I remember always feeling really like going bright red when I spoke in board meetings and stuff. And I used to think, oh, I've got a confidence issue. I'm a little bit shy or something like that. But actually with hindsight, 
and you know getting to know yourself a bit more through do, having your own business which is what like it's the biggest personal growth tool ever yeah. right like having your own business like whatever shiz you've got there that needs to come up it's going to come up right which is which is brilliant if you in that if you've had especially if you've had that trans health transformation and you're like you get to this real self transcendence part where you're like oh my goodness I feel so amazing I want to go out I want to help others you know people do um they do health coaching courses like I did or they might go back and do become a nutritionist years of uni lots of investment in terms of time and money and then when you come out the other end you still got to create a brand you still got to work out what font color you're going to have and you know yeah <laughs> like it's just like oh my god and that's why it's pretty much too daunting for a lot of people you know, they want to do it. They want to start their own business, but the, just the how and the why and the self-doubt and this, the fear and going out on your own. I mean, having your own business, you know, is the most isolated and lonely thing ever. What do you do when you've had a, like a crappy phone call or a dodgy, horrible email? You can't just go to the water cooler and like mouth yeah. off to another yeah. colleague. You know, it, it can be pretty lonely, but with the primalist <laughs> <laughs> license right so first of all karen if you came to me and you said i want to be a primal easter which i just love the way you say it. it's so cute um we would jump on a zoom call like this we'd look at like is this actually realistic in your life you know we'd be looking at things like your time your why like why do you want to do this isn't the right fit for everyone right so right so you kind of vet your why. your women yeah. And they vet me. It's like, a, yeah. is this going to be viable? Is this compatible for your life and your why? And what I've worked out in business is um, everyone has got a different version of what successful looks like or what a thriving business looks like. So, you know, for some of my primalistas, um, they work full time and they want to contribute to their community and do something with their passion for real food and health. Um, but they don't want to give up their full-time job because that's a six-figure job. They're loving it. Um, so they bake once every two to three weeks. And that fills their cup of doing something like having a kind of like a hobby that pays. And then I've got other primalistas who've walked out of um, really awesome careers as pharmacists, as registered nurses, as teachers, as um, scientists, professors. We're a really smart bunch of women. Um, and they've decided that, you know what, I could do that job that I qualified for in my twenties. I could do that job, stood on my head, but you know, what? it just doesn't give me butterflies in my tummy anymore. It doesn't light me up. It doesn't make me feel fulfilled. It pays the mortgage, but I feel like I'm kind of slowly dying on the inside doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think when we get to this like thirties, forties, fifties, which is kind of the majority of where my primal Easter is, um, sort of age range is you're looking for more than that you're not just looking for something that's going to pay the bills you know you're looking for something that's going to help you grow mm -hmm. going to give you new experiences and help you contribute in a meaningful way and I think that you know in this situation that we're in with COVID uh, it's been if there has not been a time where you've had that opportunity to go deep and have a really big think about what it is you want to do, um, then you kind of, you know, you need to get on with it and have that, <laughs> have that deep soul search. Yeah. And a lot of people in 2020 have found that they've been stood down or their hours have been reduced or something else has happened. That's been the kind of like the force, the shove off the fence to, well, actually, I've always wanted to have my own business, but it was too risky to give up the paid job before. But now what have I got to lose? And they're, they're giving it a go. So after we've had the kind of like initial chat to make sure it's a good fit for you and for me, um, then what happens is you get access to the recipes and resources, which is literally it's two pages on a website. It's password protected. Um, you get the, the recipes. We've got breads pizzas, cookies, pastries, granola, and a packet mix range as well. Sounds like a lot, but it's all very streamlined using the same uh, ingredients. Very smartly worked out. Oh, yes. um, so you get access to that. Those how-to videos from me. I mean, the recipes are really easy. Like You don't need to be a chef 
or have a catering background you know I certainly don't and and had a lot of imposter syndrome around that to start with but you know if this model is going to work these recipes need to be easy and replicable and they are they're literally you measure everything into your mixer you mix it up you pour it in a tin you put it in the oven like so you can crank through 20 40 60 loves at a time um you know it's not like one loaf where you've got to knead it and prove it and rise it and you know not open the oven while it's in you know because that model would it just would be a complete disaster and then on the resources page that's where you're going to find out everything that you want in terms of your business in terms of you know what am I going to post on social media um what pictures am I going to post you know we've got all of the glossy looking amazing insta ready pictures so you're wow social media just hits with a with a bang as well as having like all of your other marketing materials in terms of um brochures flyers banners business cards you just put your name on and they and then they're all ready for you so wow everything that you could possibly think of like in terms of mindset or um how do i set up a market stall or how do online shop orders work and how do i do an invoice and how do i make sure my stockist pays me and everything has wow. been um, developed um so that you, all you need to do really is come in work out where you want to sell your products to and get baking you know i've got um prime listers who they they join one week and they're they're at the market two weeks later wow. it can be that quick yeah oh that makes it so, like be coming from somebody that's run her own business now for now oh i'm going into my 25th year of being a business owner to have somebody that could just say, here is everything that you need. Wow. Even the school that I went to, um, the, the Institute for Transformational Nutrition, I, cho I studied nutrition schools, coaching schools, online programs for years before I actually pulled the trigger and, and decided on ITN. And I did it because the business side was like no other institute for, for nutrition coaching. And I knew I needed that because you can become a health coach, you can become the baker, you can do anything, but if you don't have those resources and you don't understand how to market yourself and how to have the mindset to do it, you're, it takes years to figure it out. So here you are, yeah. you've got this, like you said, plug and play, here you go. Every, you've thought of, all the areas <laughs> that everybody yeah, I know struggles with. <laughs> the, the, the stumbling blocks, and you know, I've, I've seen it and it's where I stumbled myself. And, you know, a lot of people think, oh, sales and marketing, oh, I don't, I'm not, I don't really like sales. I'm not really a salesy person. But the reality is that a business without sales isn't a business at all. It's just yeah. a hobby. And really, when you're working from a, a really ethical good place like you, you're wanting to do good in the world all you want to do is bake food from home with love for people in your community to make their lives a little bit easier um then it's not a hard thing to go out and promote yourself with you know but i think if um if you were going to like summarize what you get with the primalista license in three words the first one would be goodwill so, you know, there's a lot of um, brand awareness, a lot of like, no trust that you need to develop with a new business. And that can take a lot of time. But when you join an already established brand, you're jumping on board of that moving train. You know, people have already heard of Primal Alternative, even in Canada. Um, Eve, I'm speaking to potential Primalistas in Canada right now, which is super exciting. Uh, we've already got Primalistas in the U.S., so we know that this model is replicable on your side of the world. The majority of primalistas so far are in Australia because that's where I'm based, even though I've got this UK accent, don't be fooled. But we've also um, had primalistas in New Zealand, uh, England and Scotland. And it's one of those models that is really, um, you know, able to, to spread across the world. And, you know, there's, there's brand awareness of, of primal alternative in places like South Africa, Wow. in Europe you know it's just one of those so so when you pop up with your primal alternative business um people are like oh there's there's primal alternative wow how I knew it was only a matter of time until primal alternative turned up in Canada right it's just 
it's just a matter of time, which is why I'm here today just to really help that move it along. And so grateful, Karen, for you to have me on your Canadian page with all your Canadian followers. It's such an honor. So the word I want this included- in Canada, Helen, I want it here. Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> please. Some cookies, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's so funny. So yeah, so, so the first one would be the goodwill of an established brand. And really all this license does, it just gets you from A to B quicker in your own business than if you, you could do it yourself. You could, you could make your own grain-free food business or whatever business. Absolutely, go for it. But if you want to just like kind of like get all of that hard work out of the way and start earning some dollars, right, which is what I remember I couldn't wait to get through my health coaching course because because I was just like, I just want to get out and earn some money. Like this has taken forever, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so anyway, so goodwill of a well-known brand, a plug and play business model. So you don't have to worry about, you know, um, you know, like I said before, how am I going to get my retailers to pay me? We've already got an agreement that's been drawn up by a solicitor. You would get your retailer to sign before you start stocking them. So they know when they're going to pay you. They know how they've got to store the breads, all of that kind of thing. Um, and the third thing, and I believe this to be the strongest thing, and the backbone really to every prime minister's business is the community. Yeah. So you are not, you're not on your own. You're not out there as a solopreneur doing the hard yards, you know, people, your family, like they support you, sure, but they don't really get it. No. Like if you win a new retailer or, you know, somebody gives you a hard time for something, you know, you can, they'll, you can talk about it or you can go, yeah, I had this amazing win in my business today. And your family like, that's great. What's for dinner? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just right over their Thanks. head. I don't yeah, even say it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're just, but having a, like a like-minded business, it's almost like a mastermind, right? Mm-hmm. So having that, that community of other people who are doing the same thing, it's non-competitive. It's completely collaborative. So if you can't find something, oh, I'm at a market and I quickly can't remember the price of this bread. Someone will pipe up and tell you what it is or if something's gone wrong with one of your recipes, you can brainstorm what happens with the group. And, you know, when you get big wins, like when you get your food business registration from the health department, we can celebrate that with you. When you get your first um, stockist or you make your first sale or you get your first amazing bit of feedback, we'll be all there celebrating because we get it. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And so it does it work like a franchise where you pay a certain amount and then you pay a yearly fee to be to hold that uh, title and branding? It's kind of like it's kind of like a franchise, but it's a license. And the big difference between a franchise and a license is that the when it's a franchise, the franchise or has a lot of control over what you do. So you can't do any advertising without the franchise or approving. And you have to pay a percentage of every single thing you sell to the franchise or, which for me, I was just like, yuck. One, I can't even be bothered to audit all of that. And two, I just want to give you a really cool model and you can go off and do what you want with it on your terms good luck. I'm here if you need some support, but it's yours, you know, you run with it. So with the license, you pay like a set fee for the, for the license, and then you pay a monthly membership fee. So currently outside of Australia, um, the, the fee is 4646. It's funny because we have to take tax off 4646 for the license. And then the ongoing membership is just a hundred dollars a month. Wow. So, you know, I've got prime listers who are, you know, selling i don't know anywhere between five thousand to ten thousand dollars worth of product a month wow so from that whatever you sell it's about half is profit is your gross profit um so it's really easy to work out how much you need to bake to hit that kind of the margin that you want to you want to hit and then from that you just pay yeah like 25 bucks a week or tw- less than you know a hundred dollars yeah. a month yeah um which is uh, Not nothing. Much. Yeah. <laughs> and where are, are women selling them the most? Like where are they doing it in farmers markets or are they mostly doing it online and, and shipping them out? Yeah. Brilliant question. The best place to work out where to sell is where you shop. Where do you go? Mm. Because you are an ideal primal alternative client, right? Or a customer. So yeah, we do really well in farmer's markets, cafes, anywhere that's got anything gluten-free mm. on the menu can have something grain-free on the menu too. 
Um, and, you know, um, cafes and stuff can buy a loaf of our bread. They can get 14, 13 slices out of it and make a really good margin. Just put it in a, in a sandwich press, serving it with some local honey, cashew butter, that kind of thing. They can make a really good margin and it looks like it's homemade, but it's not, you know, it's just, um, it's a win-win. So we do really well. Yeah, farmers markets, cafes, independent grocers that have got the grass-fed meat, they've got the kombucha, they've got the sauerkraut, the coconut yogurt, those sorts of places will be brilliant um, grocers or supermarkets for us to be in. Um, we also do really well trading online. So a lot of primalistas have set up their own online shop uh, via their Facebook page, or they can set up their own website if they want. We've got templates. <laughs> if, you do, if you're like, I want that, but Amazing. I don't know how to do it. Yeah. We can do that for you. Um, yeah. So there's lots of different ways. That, and also just like, I've got primalistas that all they do is post on their personal Facebook page. It's yeah. big week. What do you want? And they just get a thousand dollars worth of orders that way. So that I think is idea, getting you? huge actually that, that, like I have a yeah, girlfriend yeah. that does that. She just puts it on her Facebook and she's baking out of her house and she does like sourdough breads and baked stuff and gluten-free things. And she sells out every time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, when it's your business like this, you can, you can work out what sold out is, you know, you, you yeah, don't right. need, in fact, probably when I do like one-on-one -on -one coaching with um, primalistas, the biggest problem is how do I cope with all of these orders in this short space of time that I've got. So people are looking at ways, it's not so much about how do we scale, it's how do we streamline <laughs> and, and, and learn how to say no and to set really conscious boundaries around your, because it's so easy to say, oh, okay, I'll do that and I'll just do that for you. But actually that's not what creates a thriving business. You need to have those, those boundaries. Like, so for me, when I was doing it, and this is what I've built the model on and everyone's done their own version of it is I used to bake two mornings a week. So I'd bake on a Monday morning for my retailers or the shops that used to sell the product. Um, and I'd bake for about four or five hours. That was enough time for me in the kitchen with the oven on, on my feet. You know, it's manual labor, right? Um, and then I'd pack everything up, take it out to the, to the shops the next day. And then I'd bake again on a Thursday for the market I used to do on the Friday afternoon. So it was about nine hours or so in the kitchen. And I, during that time, I could produce a thousand dollars worth of product. So it was 500 bucks um, for me, which, you know, Karen, that paid the mortgage. It was yeah. a really significant contribution. Um, and, you know, I could have easily done more. I just chose, I was still doing a bit of health coaching and massage at the time. And I like that variety. And I've got a lot of producers as well who they want to keep their other job, but they want to like take that down to two or three days a week, do a little bit of baking as well. And just have that variety uh, in their week can be very fulfilling than just doing the one, the one job, you know. But they could, I mean, you could as a stay at home mom, Really, if you baked for a couple of hours, five days a week, you could be making good money. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you know what I would recommend? And this is, this is true. I'm such a uh, one for clustering. So instead of doing five days a week, two hours, I would say, forget it. Do two days, like four or five hours. And yes. because you'll find that by the time you got the oven on, you got all your tins out and all your ingredients out, True. you can smash out 60 loaves in the same time they can do six. It's mental. Cause you get in the zone, you put your phone on airplane mode, you get your favorite Karen Martell podcast on, <laughs> you know, you, Absolutely. Get, going, you get in the zone. <laughs> <laughs> but really if somebody, even that though, if you like, you think about what most women are doing and when they're working and they're working eight hours a day. So even if you decided I'm going to do this four hours a day because you had the clientele for it, that's still, yeah. you're working half days, you're working from home and you're making good money. Like, yeah. And you what, know what, what I loved about for? it? I, it's like, seriously, you know, from being in that corporate career that I mentioned before, where you're like around a lot of people who it's not really, their values aren't aligned with what your values are, you know? So you're now working with people, you know, like I made some new besties and still besties with, even though I haven't done a market for five years, um, foodie besties who they get it when it comes to 
food and then you find out you've got really similar shared values around how they raise their children and you know yeah. schooling and all of this kind of thing you're like wow I found my people I found my yes. people it's so cool and you know being at home means that you don't have this mad scramble at the beginning at the end of the day you know you can be putting on some um have some breads cooking in the oven and you're pegging out the washing or you're getting dinner ready for the night or rolling out your yoga mat, doing a yoga session. It just makes no sense to me. And this is a good thing that's come out of coronavirus. All of this, like leaving the home to do everything. Mm -hmm. It's like, Mm -hmm. there's so many women that want to be, they love their home. They want to be at home and they love spending time in the kitchen anyway. And this is just almost like going back in time to that cottage industry where women made food from home and sold it at markets and yeah. but it's just done in a, with a bit of a modern twist yeah I love yeah. it it's the best so how did I say it wrong primalista primal how do you say it? primalista <laughs> primalista primalista okay primalista ladies <laughs> but I like primalista and just on that it's not just ladies like it was oh. and I think that that was so because... what do you call that the primalisto <laughs> Well, no, we thought about that too. And they just got all confusing. And then we decided because I'd made up the word primalista, like it's my made up word. I make up all sorts of silly words. Um, We worked out, we decided this is a gender neutral word, right? Like barista. You don't have barista. Barista. So everyone, yeah. So it's not feminine. It's not feminine. It's yeah. And, you know, I think that when I started the brand, I really valued those sort of more feminine qualities of collaboration, non-competition, support, community, you know, and I wanted to move away from that kind of patriarchal corporate dog eats dog, bitchy, Mm -hmm. right? You know what I'm saying? But what I've actually worked out as time's gone on is that those, those traits, they're not, they're not gendered either. It's just a different way of working and you know if that fits in with what guys want to do too then they're so so much welcome so so welcome I had our first male primalist to join at the end of 2020 he is a black belt in karate he's run his own karate school for 30 years um his name is Jim he's incredible and yeah with Victoria being really hit by the lockdown last year he had to quit the school and then he realized that, you know, he's got young boys and he, you know, karate is obviously weekends and evenings because you're teaching kids and yeah. stuff after school. He worked out that he actually was spending too much time away from his kids. He was ready for a change. And now he's baking from home. He'd never baked before. He had to wow. learn everything. He said he's good on the barbecue, but not yeah. good at baking. <laughs> And he's doing this full time. He, this is what is supporting his family. His wife's a health coach. Um, so it's a beautiful crossover of, you yeah. know, similar clients. And I am just all cheerleading for Jim because oh my he gosh, is, I should he's just, like the, the perfect guy. <laughs> I should get my husband to quit his job and become a primalista. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he would love that. He's a great baker, actually. <laughs> oh, there you go. There's an idea. Yeah. Now in Canada, I'm pretty sure that we can't bake from home, correct? Like it has to be a industrial kitchen. Like it has to no. be like or something. You know what? If no, you, the Food Act is very similar in New Zealand, Australia, the UK, the States, Canada. Those are the countries that we've looked at so far and we're like, oh yeah, now this is really similar to what we've been working with here. So initially it might look like you can't and that's because um, you need to show evidence that you're producing low risk on non-potentially hazardous food like like um, cakes, which essentially what we're calling them bread, but they're not bread, right? Because there's no yeast or wheat or water. It's more of a cake and it's um, we don't have cream or anything like that and it's just very low risk. Um, So we can do this from home. So with the Primalista license, you get a food safety program, which is something that you would hand over to the health department and say, look, here is all of the lab testing to show that these products are low risk. Um, Here's our method. Here's, we know what we're doing when it comes to food handling and food safety. 
and and that's a brilliant document to help you get over the line however if you did want to do it in a commercial kitchen you can yeah. you just need to um, bear in mind that that rent for that kitchen is going to be coming out from your bottom line yeah, um, right. so I love working from home some people yeah. love going out of the home um, but yeah so we can do it uh, obviously there's different tweaks in different parts of the country um, but generally from what I've seen so far in Canada selling baking from home and selling at farmers markets no dramas at all you don't even need um, a license or no. a registration to do that right yeah easy that's, that's easier than Australia yeah that's great so if somebody's interested then they want to start with a call because you always start with a call and you you know you guys got to make yeah. sure you're a good match I love that you do that Helen because that just shows your integrity it just shows that what a great person you are because you know most people would just be like you know trying to get everybody Close sold and uh, yeah right yeah. I do that too with my I do a, you know a discovery call first because I don't think I'm mm. the right fit for everybody and I'll, I'll I'm the first to tell that person like look I don't think that this is I'm the, your person you need to go and I'll try and find them who they should go to so it's same. great yeah yeah same. Yeah, yeah, which is not, you know, it's just not worth it. Like, and, and, and I have to really safeguard, we've got this amazing community. Like it's my favorite place to hang out on the internet. Right. And, and all it needs is like one bad egg to come in and, you know, your culture has changed. So it's really important for me to safeguard, not just the community, but also all of the other primal alternative businesses, you know, like this is a really big responsibility to make sure that the people that are coming in and going out there and being part of this brand of Primal Alternative, that they're the right fit to, to spread this message as well. So yeah, so we start with a call. So, um, and we've got really friendly uh, call times. And if you find that it's too late at night or too early in the morning, let me know. Cause I'm like super flexible, especially for my friends on the other side of the planet. I understand time zones, are like, ugh, but you can book it in your time zone, which definitely um, saves a lot of headaches. So you just go to my website and you get access to my diary at primalalternative.com forward slash call. Easy. And you just like a couple, like, and there's four or five questions. It'll just be like, whereabouts in the world are you? And that kind of thing. And uh, just so I can prepare before the call. And then, yeah, we'll take it from there. Easy, and that easy. feels like there's less risk too. Like just that knowing that, you know what, this person's going to be honest with me that whether or not, you know, so if I'm a person that's going, Oh, I don't know, could this work for me? It's nice to know that I could come talk to you and you are going to be really honest and really straight up. Like, here's what it's about. Are you a good fit or not? Yeah. It's great. So why Absolutely. don't I, can, yeah. can I just have your booking link? Why don't you send it to me and I'll put everybody, I'll put her booking link so you can just, I'll, and I'll put your website, but I'll put the booking link even right mm. in the show notes so that if this has piqued your interest that you can be like, yes, I am going to go book a call. And that's a, just a great place to start. There are no, no strings attached. You just can just book no, the call gosh, and no go have a chat stuff. and see if your gut is telling you that this is maybe a good fit for you. Yeah. yeah, great. And you know, when you book the call, you'll get like some information from me for to do a little bit more research. Like, so you, uh, there's a webinar that I've done that explains how it all works. And oh. you can have a look at the license agreement, which is a beautiful document, um, easy to read. So you can make sure that you're happy with everything. And if you've got any questions, you bring them to the call. And like I say, the call is, it's, it's like, you know, the potential primalist will be doing most of the talking, they'll be telling me why they want to get you know, into their own business and how that's going to fit into their week and what potential places they could sell to and how much they want to work, how much they want to earn and how that's going to impact their life and make that difference and how much they want it. You know, if they come to me and say, oh, this is all brilliant, but my motivation to do this is, is zero. They'd be like, yeah. well, <laughs> that's not going to work. You know, so it's just a really, it's a lovely call. I love it. It's very informal. You can get a vibe for me, that it'll be just a really friendly chat like this, right in this position here. Right. So yeah. I'd love to talk to you. Yeah, it'd be yeah. great. Oh, that's so great. I love it. I love it. And I hope that anyone from Canada, if you do this, please let me know. Send me a message because I will buy from you. <laughs> I will be your first I can't client. Tell you. <laughs> Seriously, the amount of, the amount of um the amount of people who contact me from Canada and say, can I order? Where can I order? 
where can I order? And I mean, oh it's, my gosh, yeah. It, it's yeah, and I'm like, not yet, not yet. You could try and get them from the states, but it's a bit of a hassle getting them over the border, I believe. So we need prime ministers in Canada. And the great thing is, you know, if you're if you're thinking about this, you're thinking, well, it's a bit, you know, it sounds a bit risky. What if I what if I don't like it? What if I don't make any sales? You know, it's been all right for all those Australian women, but what if it doesn't work for me? Then there's a really awesome guarantee that's um, just come into play actually at the start of this year. So there's a seven day cooling off period. So you get to look at all the recipes and resources and everything I've told you about. And if you look at it all and think, what a load of rubbish, then you can get your money back. Uh, no questions asked, right? And then if in the first three months you don't make a sale, you get your money back too. That's how confident I am. Wow. That you will get sales. I've never had a prime minister come to me and say, well, I've done all of this, but I haven't sold any bread. That is not a problem. <laughs> wow. And I know like for a lot of people, making sales is such a problem. So, um, you know, it feels, oh, I'm not salesy. I love baking and I'm really into this way of life, but I'm not salesy. You, you know, you don't need to be. Oh, um, and yeah, trust so. me, you guys, no, no woman is salesy. We all are so nice and we're all so feeling so guilty. Like we don't want to sell ourselves and like our business and our product. Yeah. Trust yeah. me, because I've had to do it. You, you do get used to it and you realize if you don't offer your product or your services, how the heck are you going to help anybody? You can't. You, it has no. to be, and it has to be an exchange. We can't give away because there, in life, it just has to be an exchange of something and for it to work. So I really believe that. Yeah. But how hard, Karen, from being an entrepreneur yourself, how hard was it for you to work out how much you were going to charge? It was pretty hard. <laughs> it still is hard. <laughs> still struggle with it how all nice the time <laughs> how nice would it be if i said all right karen this is how much it's going to be for for a one-hour consult this is how much it's going to be for a webinar this is how much it's going to be for a podcast and you have to charge that and you you there's no you, and you're like yeah. really i can't charge that much yeah. but it's actually you can and so that's what i've done so you will you know you come and you there I love is a set it. price that you pay. that's it and so you don't have to you know squirm and don't get me wrong like uh, when I first started, I started selling the products at less than it cost for me to make them. So like right. it was costing me like $7 <laughs> to make a loaf of bread. And I was like, yeah, it's $5. Yeah, I'm over $5. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, you know, working out afterwards, I'm like, oh my God, I sold out. I'm amazing. Oh, I made a loss. Not amazing. You know, <laughs> um, so there's, there's a lot, there's a lot to learn. And, and, you know, I've had, you know, written out prices on pieces of paper. Then I've like stood on the piece of paper trying to feel yeah, what yeah, the totally. right price is. Yeah, right. But now, you know, like we've been, these products have been selling for like, this is the seventh year that Primal Alternative products have been selling. So we know the price is right. We know people want these products. So there's a lot more of that risk, you know, there's risk in anything, right? But the risk is mitigated um, when you join a license like this. So yeah, wow. it's yeah, a lot of fun <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. It was great to have you on right. again. And we're going to have to find a reason to have you back again, because as I said, before we started yeah. recording, we're the dynamic duo and people like, like us, they liked you and I together oh, as do I. I. <laughs> I just thought next time we can do a trio. What we'll do, this is what we'll commit to, right? Okay. The first Canadian primalista, whoever oh. she is, Yes. We'll get together and we'll do a little call like this and we can talk to them. Instead of asking me all the questions, you can say to them, what was it like? You know, like being a pioneering primalista in a new country is a little bit more scary. There's a little bit more to find out than, you know, coming into an established area. But it's like so much fun being the founding primalista in Canada. So we'll have whoever that is, he or she on the show. Should we do that? Oh my gosh, that's great. I'm going to send it, this to my neighbor because she was wanting to do something like this and she's been holding off on it and she would be a perfect fit. So maybe she'll be my first, the first Canadian one. <laughs> yeah, well, that's handy if it's just down the road. Perfect. Right. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. All right, Helen. Um, you you enjoy your, it's the morning there. So you have the good, a good rest of your day, I guess. Right. It's evening. Yeah, it's here. Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Early. It's, it's Monday here. Nine. 
Yeah. I told my, my daughter, I was like, shower. you're about to go to bed. Yes. My daughter was like, <laughs> why are you working right now? It's dinner time. And I'm like, cause it's Tuesday morning with Helen <laughs> where Helen is. So <laughs> she's like, what? I'm like, yes, it's in Australia. No, it's so confusing, <laughs> but I really like having the advantage of being in the future. I feel sort yeah. of better than you. Oh, yeah. right. Right. <laughs> You can be. You can be better than me. Okay. Oh, all right. Well, I love you. Thank you so much for coming on the show again. Love you too, Karen. Awesome.